Jody Sweeten is a mom, actress, activist, author, podcaster, and director. You may remember her from the hit show Full House and the newer Netflix version Fuller House. We discuss how the pandemic affected her mental health, which resulted in days of not getting out of bed, and what she did to motivate herself to keep going. Life as an actress ain't easy, and Jody joins Peaks and Valleys to talk about it right now. They say it is the darkest before the dawn. But what do you do before the dawn comes when all you have is candles and night lights guiding your path until morning, until your sight is restored and you can see your way out, your way through, your way to the other side. You push with all your might until the day breaks and your victory comes. This is Peaks and Valleys with TK Trinidad. All right, folks, we have a very special guest in the house, like so many hats. So mom, <laughs> actress, activist, author, podcaster, director, just all around amazing person. Please welcome Jody Sweeten. Thank you so much, TK. I am so excited to be here. I'm really honored that you asked me to to be a part of this show. I, I love I love what you talk about. I love what this is, Peaks and Valleys. We, we all have them. So I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you for coming on. I mean, it's just one of those things we, you know, we've seen you, you grow up and all this other stuff, but we don't know the behind the scenes. So let's kind of get into, you know, that one time in your life where ish wasn't going well. And you're like, why am I doing this? You know what I'm going to, you know, I'm sure everyone thinks they know sort of the pieces of my life that I would probably choose. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this last year, the first few months of the pandemic were probably one of the hardest times of my life, uh, mental health wise. Mm, okay. Um, and it's not something that I've talked about a lot because I think, you know, we haven't been doing interviews and doing all stuff, but looking back on it now, I realize like I, I, it really hit me hard and I did not do well for a few months. My kids and I, like everything sort of fell apart and like looking at now this year and sort of everything that's transformed and the hope that there is and all of that, like looking back on where I was, I'm like, wow, that was a really, like, I knew it was dark and awful when I was in it. I think we all did, but like looking back on it now, it's, it was really painful. It was yeah. really painful. So was it because of, you know, the world shut down and then the days kind of like, you know, multiplied or was it something before that? And then the world also happened to shut down. I think it was, I think for me too, as a mom, it was, there was an extra level of fear and terror and panic because I, I felt so utterly out of control of the entire world, mm -hmm. uh, that I felt like I couldn't give my kids what they needed. I couldn't show up and be that person. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't stop my anxiety. I was angry. I was frustrated. I was, you know, it, and it, and I think it really started like when everything shut down and it was like, oh, okay, it'll be a couple weeks. I just, I was like, I don't, I don't feel like this is just going to be a couple weeks. Like I, I've watched okay. enough documentaries about, you know, pandemics and things like that. And I'm like, I feel like this is it's kind of going to be a big one. deal. Right. It's going to be a big mm -hmm. one. Um, and then as it went on, I think watching my kids go through it and their fear and their fear coming out as anger and frustration and mine coming out as anger and frustration at me, at the world. And, you know, it wasn't, I mean, we weren't particularly here in the U S we weren't just dealing with the quarantine. We were dealing with a political climate that was absolutely on fire. Right. And, you know, I, I, jumped into that a lot. And I think, I think I just like looking back on it now, I took on a lot of things and I'm glad that I did it kept my mind busy. Right. Um, but you know, I, I think we, we all have big plans for 2020, right? There are things we were excited and all this kind of stuff. I was, you know, yeah. directing and I had, you know, this show ideas and I, all these things and you know, going into it, it was like, okay, we're going to, we're going to make this work. And as it went on and went on the realization of financial insecurity, the realization of my kids fear, the, the, the panic and terror that I have parents who have, who are older, who have lots of health issues, who live in Orange County where people were really disregarding masks, mask issues and, and, and mm -hmm. mandates. And so 
my parents would say, you know, they'd have to go to the pharmacy and my dad's 86 years old, you know, and has a pacemaker and have, my mother is, you know, 74 and she's got all kinds like, right. You know, I was like, oh my God, terrified every time they had to go out. And yet I was going out and, you know, I was really active in, in movements and protests and stuff in the streets. So, and that was like an extra level of like, I know I have to do this, but am I putting myself at risk? Am I putting my right. family at risk? Am I like, am I stupid for doing this? No, I can't not do this. Like a lot of self-talk. So much, I mean, I, I suffer from, and I, you know, I have been more open about this lately, but I suffer from anxiety and depression and PTSD and, and things. And, you know, when you are sort of naturally in that place of like the world feels like it's a lot when mm -hmm. the world becomes completely overwhelming, overwhelming mm -hmm. um, I just found myself shutting down. Like I would be like, I'm going on a walk. I would go walk for like two hours and feel like I didn't know. Like I, it was like, I came back into my body. Like those, those types of real, um, painful situations when you're in your mental health, you're like, I'm not in my body. Right. And I think, you know, sometimes we don't talk about things like that because, you know, it feels like, well, what do I have to, why am I complaining? Why am I, I don't get to talk about this. Right. You know, and I think we all do that to ourselves. Like, oh, well, someone else is doing, you know, X, Y, and Z. So I can't, I don't have room to fall apart. Yeah. And well, I think that's I put a lot of that yeah. on myself. Well, that's the whole reason why I wanted to do like this type of concept, because at the end of the day, if you take away, you know, the television shows or just, you know, whatever, whatever, whoever is doing in life, we still have these emotions and these feelings. And I, mm -hmm. I think it's helpful to like connect on that level. Right. And so like bring it back to like everything that you were feeling, what was, was there moments of self-talk to yourself, like kind of to get over the hump or like, how did you, because it could go drastically the wrong right. way. So how did you maintain at least? I think part, I mean, I, I, I'm one of those people that I'm like, I have to keep going. Like no matter what, you know, no matter what you have to show up, you have to keep going. Right. And I knew that at the end of the day, I'm mom, right? I'm mom. Uh, I, I have to, I have to show up. I have to do this. I have to figure out how to show up every day in a way that tells my kids that we're going to make this, we're going to make it through. Right. And, you know, I think parents do that all the time in crisis situations. I mean, there's, you know, I've, I've been through all sorts of things where as a mom on the inside, you're like, I can't do this. I don't, I, I, I don't have the money to make rent. I can't, you know, we need to go to Target and I can't afford, you know, I, I can't afford to spend the $150. We have been there. So essentially you're saying like, the, you know, your kids are, are who kept you kind of going. They were definitely what kept me going. And I, and I, I had to also be okay with saying like, uh, mom's not, I'm trying, I'm trying. Mom is really trying right now. And, I, you know, my girls are a little older, so they understand. My girls, Zoe's just turned 13. Um, and again, you know, 13 is a really fun age. It's a mm -hmm. really fun age. It's not a really fun age. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, add in what doing at 13. I think like 14, 15, it kind of went kind of awry. But right. Yeah, I mean, and that's, that's the really thing is you're like, oh, God, I know what I was doing when I was 13. Oh, <laughs> no. And then, you know, add in a pandemic that completely strips them of their social life skills, all of that, you know, failing school, like what is distance learning? Like how, you know, and right. then at some points as a parent, you just have to go like, you know what? I can choose to fight today about you going to science or I can just, or I just have to walk away and go, you know what? I, we're going to science is just going to have to be what it is today. Like learning those moments, um, when I, like I had to show up, but also when to be gentle on myself and to my kids. Cause I wasn't a perfect mom. I was a, I, I, like, we were screaming, we were yelling, it was crying. There was, it was ugly. And I like to share yeah. that because I think during quarantine, we saw a lot of people that were like, I'm so happy to be with my family and we're doing crafts and we're doing and baking we bread were, and right, baking, but no, we were just trying not to like have a full battle Royale cage match in this house. <laughs> 
And sometimes we weren't successful, you know, like sometimes it was just crazy. Um, and my boyfriend was living in New York at the time. He hadn't moved out yet. He was planning on coming. He had told me January of last year, I'll be moving out in July. Mm -hmm. And then the world turned upside down, you know? Um, and so it was, it was me and my girls and there was just no, there was no balance in that high energy, you know? Right. Um, but I showed up for them and I knew I had to, I knew I didn't have a choice. I knew the end of the day, like mom's got to peel herself out of bed at least, you know, and figure out how to show up and let them know that we're going to make it. It's going to be okay. <laughs> you know? Now with that being said, like, I mean, I'm, I'm not a mom, but I'm kind of assuming the, the qualities that you had before you had kids, they kind of intensify with, with having kids. So mm -hmm. before you had your kids, what kind of, you know, created that attitude in you where it's like, you know, I, I I'm going to show up despite everything that, you know, I'm feeling at the moment. Well, I think growing up in this business and working from a really young age, uh, gave me an incredibly strong work ethic, you know, and sometimes for better or worse, because sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm sick. I got to show up anyway. And that's yeah. part of this part of the entertainment business is you're like, oh, I have a fever and I'm dying. And you're like, well, let's pop a couple Advil and go work a 12 hour day and you can rest yeah. later. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a kid, there are times that you like you're sick and you're like, well, I got to go do this anyway. So I think I really learned that. I also have parents, you know, my dad worked sort of blue collar jobs his whole life, worked at a gypsum plant, was a, you know, superintendent at a gypsum plant in Long Beach Harbor, like, you know, didn't live like this crazy extravagant life. But I watched, I had examples in my life of my mom and dad, who it was like, you just show up. Like, if you say mm -hmm. you're going to do something, you do it. Yeah. And of course, as a kid and a young adult, like, I screwed that off all the time. You know what I mean? Like, I was irresponsible. And I, but once I got sober and once I like really got my life together, um, and even when I was out there, like, you know, using and whatever, like, that was the one thing when I would forget or screw up like a, a commitment, I knew that was like, oh, I knew it. I knew it. So I got this sense of, of work ethic instilled in me at a very young age. And I think that mm -hmm. has grown with me. And it's something that I still have to this day. Like I show up, I work hard, I do what I've got to do. Um, but I also sometimes have to stop and realize, and my boyfriend tells me this sometimes, he's like, you know, remember your kids didn't grow up the way that you did. So mm -hmm. that sense of responsibility and sort of everyone else first before my knee, you know, he's like, they don't have, that's not necessarily them. He's like, and it's not better or worse. Right. But it is hard. I think sometimes we put our own expectations on our, on our kids or on other people. I, I mean, and that's, you know, always a recipe for disaster uh, is to expect other people to behave how we would. Yeah. And um, I'm learning that. I agree. <laughs> It's, a th it's, it's a th hard. So um, pretty much we, we I, I don't even know, I don't even know how to say this is we're out of the pandemic. We're still in the pandemic. We're still kind of. We're adjusting to the new normal post like peak pandemic. I don't know. That's a, I, that's it's we're reemerging. I don't know. Yeah, it feels like, I ever, no like I feel like such a feral animal. Like I go out and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I don't know how to interact with people. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's 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 a it's a different world, and I, I feel like um, same thing. Like the anxiety and the overwhelming of being stuck at home, and it's just kind of like you can't distract yourself with other. There's only so much Netflix you can watch, and all this other stuff. So you get to a point where you're just like, okay, what's what it, what 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 am I going to do? What I have to do do daily? Right. And so you know, now we're a year later. And um, like, how are you feeling now? Like, is it still, is there like some after residual effects from it all or? Oh, like uh, yeah. I mean, there's, I think there's totally some residual effects from it all just in like getting back out in the world. Like, I'm like, oh, I don't like, it does. It's overwhelming. Like, uh, like, you know, groups of people are like, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's very people-y. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think it's so much better now because I used, I, I've been through enough in my life. I've, I've had enough valleys and hit enough peaks mm -hmm. that at this point I'm like, 
oh, I know what resources I have and that I've got to be able to use them. I've got to be able to ask for help. I've got to be able to put my ego aside and say, I'm struggling in my mental health right now. My anxiety is a, is a real problem. My depression is a real issue right now. And use the friends, the resources that I have and, you know, call my doctor and be like, yo, I'm falling apart. You know, mm -hmm. call my therapist, get back into therapy. I started uh, working out two days a week with a trainer over um, FaceTime. And, you know, that was something I could do online. Right. I did like online dance classes. And then I found somebody that I really liked that two days a week. That was my self-care commitment. Mm -hmm. Even when I was like, I don't know, like finances were struggling, all stuff. I was like, should I, should I not? And I was like, this is the, these are, it's two hours of, a, of the week mm -hmm. that I care for myself. I care for my body. I take care of my temple. I get my mm -hmm. endorphins running. I get my frustrations out. Like my body feels better. My mind feels better. So, yep. you know, I think sometimes as women, as moms, we look at those bits of like really important things of self care as frivolous yeah, or as unnecessary. And I still do like, I'm, I don't buy things for myself. I couldn't tell you the last time I went shopping well, I'll take my kids, but I look right. at like a cute dress and I'm like, mm, do I, I don't really need that. Like, I don't, I'll put it back. I always put it back. Yeah. The kids are like, mom, can I have this? Can I have, that? I'm like, yes, absolutely. Everything you want. Right. Because it feels silly to take care of myself. Right. And I think that's one of the things that I really had to focus on in this pandemic is like, how do I, you know, I, I'm, I'm basically a complicated house plant, right? Like I need food. I need water. Uh -huh. I need some sunshine. And, you know, I'm, I went through a moment in my anxiety. I'm an anxiety starver. So I don't eat when I panic. Mm. So I lost like 37 pounds. I, I, I was like not doing well with food intake stuff. Wow. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'm not eat my, my body is like not having food. I would get sick all the time. It was awful. I, I wasn't drinking enough water because I was just, you know, like I, I just didn't want to do anything. I wow, wasn't okay. exercising or doing anything. I was like hibernating. We all were hibernating inside. I was, you know, three shades paler than I am now. Like all of those things. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm forgetting all of the basics and expecting right. myself to thrive in a crisis. Right. And then beat so, myself up when I'm not. <laughs> so with doing all of that, um, is, is it almost like a self-sabotage? Like, I mean, obviously we're both not psychiatrist but like your the way your body did that is that something that like is habitual when stuff happens like th that kind of stuff happens in your life yeah so I think I like I focus all of my energy into like mental gymnastics and freak outs and all and like I get so mm -hmm. up here in my own head and it gets so overwhelming and mm -hmm. ugly and yeah. not helpful. And you're right. It is a form of self-sabotage because it feels like no matter what I do, my head's going to be like, it's not enough. You're not doing this. Or just constantly critiquing or having that fear that anxiety gives us where we don't even start. Right. Like I have things I want to do, but I just, I can't even start them because it feels like so much. Right. And like perfect moment to start it or everything. Right. Like, and I can't, I say, I'm like, what do you, what? it's nothing is going to like, there's not going to be some moment when all of a sudden it's like, and now you're ready. Like yeah. just, you just have to take action and do it, you know? And I still have some of those things and some of those, you know, voices in my head. But I think where I'm at now is I, I, I've been able to walk through the fear of losing all of that and be like, okay, we're going to make it just like we always do. <laughs> you know, that, that sort of positive self-talk that you have right. to have, but it, it definitely is, uh, you know, it's it's take, taking a hard look at yourself and being like, ah, I'm not allowing myself to thrive or I'm expecting myself to thrive while not giving myself any sort of resources. Yeah. So with that being said, um, there are a lot of people who've like watched you and, you know, they, they look up to you. And what would you say in one sentence to motivate somebody who's you know, currently in their, their valley. In their valley. Um, I would remind them that they are important and worthy 
regardless of anything that they do that day, that in their inherent existence is worthiness and importance and value. And to remind themselves that they are not, it's longer than one sentence, I can't do one sentence. <laughs> but to, remind, to remind themselves that they are not what they produce. They're, they're, you're, you're not, you are, you are more than the, the stuff that you create and the things that you get done in a day. You are enough just sitting there in a chair and enjoying the sunshine for the day or doing nothing. That's okay. You know, this hustle, hustle, hustle all the time culture, I think has got us um, thinking that we're only as valuable as what we put out. Right. But that's, you know, that's not true. And I, I found, I have found those moments for myself and it's made a huge difference. And we mm -hmm. all had to stop during this pandemic. It was not, it was like, there is no, there's nothing to do. Right. And I think yeah. a lot of people got really introspective. I think a lot of people got to that point of like, what's really, what is really important? What do I really value? What do I really want to put my time and my effort and my thoughts into? Yeah, hope. I mean, hopefully. I mean, I I, I know people who have, um, and you know, I know people who are just you know enjoying enjoying the check every week. So it, yeah, I, right. I I was one of those people who really learned a lot about myself, and and it this this concept of the show, you know, I knew before I wanted to do something before the pandemic, but this concept really came through the mm -hmm. pandemic. So, you know, I think a lot of things, um, a lot of great things, you know, are happening and we have to, we have to go through those valleys to get to, to enjoy those peaks because if life was just, you know, 60%, then it'd be like. Right. Well, I, you know, I remind myself that the only thing constant is change. Yes. It's the only thing constant is that everything is not, is not going to be like it is right now. Yeah. And sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's worse. Sometimes it's just different. Yeah. And that's all okay. That's, you know, those, none of, none of those things are better or worse than the other. They just, they just are, and we have to get through them. And, and, you know, it doesn't mean that it's easy or it's comfortable. Right. Just being okay with it. Um, for, for folks who, I mean, I don't see why you're not, but let's like, what current projects do you have? I know you guys have the podcast. The podcast is absolutely hilarious. Thank um, you. It's Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my friend Celia Behar and I, uh, she is my best friend. Uh, she and I do never thought I'd date this, which is a ridiculous look at parenting, um, at really inappropriate. And as my mom says, if you don't like the F word, I wouldn't listen. Uh, <laughs> this is true. yeah, I will admit I have a mouth like a truck driver. Um, it, but sometimes that's really the only thing that you can say when you're dealing with your children. So, uh, it, that has been so much fun. We're heading into our fourth season, um, late, like mid time this year. So we're starting planning on new stuff. We've got kind of a new direction that we want to take some things and do some fun stuff with that. So we're really working on that. Um, I've been reading a bunch of scripts and auditioning. I just, you know, like I said, there's a couple things in the works that I can't talk about yet. It's a couple of little appearances that I might be doing. So, um, so I'm getting back to being busy and that's good, but it's also been nice because I realize you know, this past year has given me the perspective that uh, it's nice to be busy. It's nice to be working. I mm -hmm. appreciate, I am so grateful for every moment I have, but I also try and remember that it's okay sometimes to put my phone down and sit in the, in, in the backyard in the afternoon sun and look at my garden and water my plants and just yeah. do that for a little while too. I'm trying to get there. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. I'm trying to get there. It is. It is. So, podcasts some future podcasts projects. yes you can check me out at never thought i'd say this is our okay. podcast uh instagram you can follow me at never uh, uh, at jody sweeten on instagram and twitter uh and official jody sweeten is uh where my facebook stuff is so yeah you can find me i'm i'm trying to be more active uh on social media again because i kind of had to do a little detox there for a while mm -hmm. uh but i'm but i'm back and um yeah it's you know peaks and valleys man growing changing learning sure. It's ups, it's downs. Sometimes they happen in the same day. Yep. And it is what it is. It is we, what it is. We meet life. We, we, you know, we rise to the road in front of us and we just keep going. Thank you so much. Great. Absolutely, honey. I'll talk to you later. Peaks and Valleys is produced by Josh Rodriguez and TKO Productions. Spoken word and voiceover is done by yours truly, Lem Gonzalez. Thank you for listening. And remember, after the darkness comes the dawn.